Windows 8 is really for tablet functionality. It allows you to switch between apps. It has nice big buttons. You can select one of those buttons and go in. And of course, with a tablet, you're going to be able to enlarge images and things like that. The problem that the, you have with software like that is it's also meant for laptops and computers because Microsoft has such a huge install base. And while it's pretty, you lose a ton of functionality suddenly when you're using your mouse to look at that same menu, it's really like, okay, it's pretty, it's bigger, so what? Still a laptop. Well, when you combine gaze control with the touchpad, you can actually make Windows 8 come alive on the screen, similar to a tablet. And in fact, in some cases, even better. So, Anders is just going to show you how you can swoosh left and right. You're swooshing on the touch pad that you're looking on the monitor in the direction that you want to go, right? And then the similarly, now I want to select, let's say, Internet Explorer. I look at the E and I press the touch pad, it selects Internet Explorer. So wherever I look and touch, it goes. Now he's in Amazon. Um, if you were in Amazon and you're looking at a bunch of products, have you ever, I don't know, have you ever tried to like make the screen on your laptop bigger because you forgot you weren't on a tablet? Well, you want to zoom in. You can actually zoom just like you do with a, a tablet by looking at the area you want to zoom and switching on the touchpad. So all of a sudden you have this amazing functionality. So you're taking the cursor out of the equation. Yeah, you're, you're basically using your eyes to point and then the touchpad to sort of zoom or function like the fingers and the touchpad or the uh, left mouse, you know, will select. So if we take, go back out to Windows now and we go into um, uh, Sudoku, you can play a game. So he's looking with his eyes at Sudoku, and you see the little bitty bubble, that's actually the eye gaze point, just to kind of give you an idea of where it is, exactly. Well, if you were going to try to play this game with a mouse, I mean, you wouldn't. Because <laughs> you basically have to, like, put your cursor on the box, and then go to the... Uh, Oh, it's it's all it's oh, there it goes. Okay. And so, in this case, if you were trying to do it manually with a mouse, you would kind of move your cursor around, etc. Well, if you use your eyes, you look at the box, and then tap. So, he's going to look now, here, go to a particular number, look at that, and then tap. So, if you think about that process, that's actually more efficient than even a touchpad would be because you can look at the square, look at the number and select it in a few hundred milliseconds. And so there's a lot of things that are actually going to be even more efficient. Um, How much does it cost to build this into your laptop? You know, this is a prototype, so it isn't... If it was in volume. When it, gets, when it gets to the market and it's time to be in a real laptop at the right size and the right price, you'll be able to afford it. It'll be a few years. So it works fine today. It's just not quite small enough or at the right price point for mass market. The first market that it'll go into, um, I think, is going, to, it, is going to be in the software market for professionals, like computer-aided design, areas where you have fatigue, um, gaming. So this Asteroids game that you see that little picture of right there, there's huge potential in gaming if you think about a situation where I look at a figure and it looks back at me. Um, and um, then after that, it'll be mass market pricing, mass